I'm getting the hang of that uh, whirly thing and I like it. I can make it work. Um, I've uh, experimented with this thing and uh, <clears throat> the the nature of a uh, Ericsson call it is you can cause things to run true and you can, ca can cause things to run untrue because of that uh, little taper there, okay? So I can cause this thing to run untrue pretty radically and still get an accurate reading. You know, it'll, it'll just by reducing the movement, maybe if I can get it uh, running so out of true, it'll show two marks on the dial. But if I get the indicator running within those two marks, I generally, uh, I believe I can get things running within a thousandths with this thing, a little patience. And I've actually spent two hours with this thing. <laughs> it's got some kind of funny things. I'll show you something I discovered, but it's not real accurate maybe not usable okay I'm gonna pull it forward and let that uh, OD probe uh, contact the face you can actually I can slip this out of gear right here okay now one of the values of this thing here is uh, it's hard to turn this spindle even when it out of gear Let's see if I could get there we're out of gear I'm still turning a whole bunch of gears see so this is going to be valuable for setting stuff up. Okay, see, I got a contact in the face. And you can actually tell on the dial that it's out of tram. But it's uh, the way this is. I'm going to play with the angle. I think the angle's wrong, so it's not reading correctly. But you can tell something's out of tram on a on the face with this uh, gizmo. It, it, it's, it's interesting. I, I, I'm glad I have it. It'll be handy on this machine because the, you know, it, it, it's kind of hard to, uh, to do things on this machine compared to lighter weight ones. And this is very handy too. Uh, this is the Noga little arm. I'm really glad I got these little Noga things. This is the best one I've ever used. And I've got the Indicol too that would like clamp onto the outside of this collet chuck, which is handy. You don't have to take your tool out. So I, I've got stuff pretty well covered with it, add, adding this thing. Now on this uh, precision stuff, um, so people add it's just some great, great stuff. Uh, Taylor Craft uh, 1947. Um, I had really, uh, you know, he's got different experiences in me, and I've never, never thought of this, and never come across it. But you can eliminate the table, the but the table movements by spacing, like this. Say this is your work, and the spindle's here, and you're drilling these holes. Well, you can space this along a bar, a ground bar, with these. Uh, um, uh, in measuring rods in the micrometer and eliminate the ta table movements entirely. But uh, <clears throat> most of the time I got something kind of big on the table or odd. Um, so uh, I'm, I, I will be able to use that though. I, I'm really glad that he uh, gave me that tip. And now another thing he mentioned, and, and he's right, I think on this machine, but I was trained not to do it with the jig bore, and you can't do it with the lathe. It, and that is when you're uh, positioning a table like that, you back it off. You unload the screw. And uh, I was kind of trained not to do that. Um, especially on the lathe, you can't do that. A instead, letting the machine run and that problem settle out normally, then lock the table, okay? But I think he's right with this machine that uh, uh, there's a couple things on the jig board I don't, I, it, that might cause a little bit of a problem with. But I think on this machine is right because you're leaving this thing humped up with pressure on it even when you lock it. And so it'd probably be best to unload it. Okay. But on a lathe you can't do that because the work will push the tool back. So you have to leave the screw loaded against uh, against that, that travel. 
Oh, and another one that, that's really good. And this is this is I, I really this is fun. Now it's the table lock and the Gibbs. And uh, I'm going to confess right now that uh, this machine is is in just uh, the right conditions to exaggerate everything I show. And uh, with a properly ad adjusted machine, you're still going to have these problems, but it'll be a lot less, okay? Now, what, what's going on with the machine is it's sat for so long. And I have the knee disconnected. I ran it a year ago and it pumps oil everywhere when you got the motor and the knee going. But I have that disconnected now and I'm manually, uh, uh, you know, pushing, putting oil on the ways with my fingers, you know, uh, to, to do this stuff that I'm doing right now. And it's not oiled properly. And also I have the gib a little bit loose. Remember this thing was uh, rusted up in the junkyard. So, and it's still got gummy stuff because they didn't take the table off and, and, and any of that. I'm uh, flush stuff and wash stuff off with kerosene. I, I really didn't disassemble, disassemble very much on this mill. You know, the, the hand wheels and, and uh, the, the dials and things like that that got uh, uh, badly uh, exposed to, to water and stuff. Okay, now I'm going to get back to uh, the, the table lock. Now, a couple guys uh, uh, talked about the table lock deflection. <laughs> and, okay, here's the table lock, and I got this... Um, Big boy extended all the way as far as I can get uh, towards the end of the table here, and let's get that. Let's get that uh, indicator on zero. I get it where I hope the reflections won't get you too bad. Let's get that. Uh, oh, that's the wrong knob. This knob. Uh, we, here we go. Get it on there. I'll load it. There we go. Ah. Uh. These are sensitive. Can I do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like Jason something. Well, that's going to have to be good enough. Whoop, whoop. Pretty much good enough. Okay, I'm going to put that table lock on. Let's see. I'm, I'm trying to make sure. I think you can see it. Table lock on. Hey, that's not too bad. Only deflected it a thousandths and a half. Okay, I'm going to push it back. Let me push that back. <laughs> okay, let's try it again and see what happens. Yeah, a good uh, two thousandths anyway, isn't it? Deflection when you put on that lock. Now, the way the lock works, now I told you I loosened the gib, and we're going to get under there. I'm going to show, in case you don't know what the gib is, it's that wedge thing right there with the screw. I backed that off just a little bit so I can move the table when it was rusty. And uh, it, it's not, it's loose. So it kind of exaggerates things a little bit. But uh, that, that kind of a lock, and here's the lock here. You can see it. Here's the handle. It goes right on through and it screws into that gib and squishes the gib against the uh, table way, that V way, okay? Or dovetail. Now let's get over here to the jig borer. Okay. Now its mechanism, it's like a disc brake caliper, but it works on this strip here. And the handle here just actuates this clamp on this strip and it has no effect on the way. See, it locks it down here. Isn't that cool? Okay, now if you guys got any more, I'll, I'll do uh, addition four. <laughs> hey, thanks everybody for the input. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Okay, have a good one.